The government has decided to keep the seven-day isolation rule for COVID cases, but has asked for more advice on whether people can return to work if they test negative before their time is up. Cabinet made that call with the strained health system in mind, something the government's hoping to fix by opening the immigration floodgates and offering automatic residency to basically every single health professional. His political editor, Jenna Lynch. You know the drill. Just a pinprick. A shot in each arm to protect from COVID and the flu. And I barely felt that one at all, thank you. The PM and Health Minister protecting themselves and today deciding we need to keep protecting each other. The seven-day mandatory isolation period is here to stay. We consider it on a, on a rolling basis, but um, certainly my expectation is that we will reach the point where there isn't a mandatory isolation period. Aucklanders we spoke to split on whether ISO should stay or go. So stop isolating people and let us get on with our lives. I think it's having a bit of a restriction on businesses and things. No, absolutely not. No, 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 no. no. I think that isolation is what uh, keeps us safe. Over the last week, there have been more than 12,000 cases. As at midnight Sunday, there were 219 people in hospital with COVID, seven in ICU. And in the past week, eight people have died. In total, almost 2,700 people have died from COVID since the pandemic began. COVID-19 will become normal. Um, I would expect, certainly at the latest, by the end of the winter, we'll be into, a, into that zone. The opposition says mandatory isolation should have gone yonks ago, as it has in many other countries. I think we're at the place where we can take strong guidance, uh, but I'm not sure we need mandatory isolation periods. This government's been treating adults like children for far too long. The government has asked for specific advice on test to work, so if people test negative, they can leave isolation early. There is a labour market incentive for this as well. People with COVID-19 going to work potentially infect more people, and more people end up being off work sick as well. Modelling released today showed ending isolation periods could result in an up to 25% increase in the number of hospitalisations and deaths over the next six months. Dr Sam Merton says isolation periods are more nuanced than we're treating them. Some people may find that they're not shedding COVID you know, within a few days, but others will still be quite sick and sneezy and coughy for quite a bit of time. So it varies from person to person. Having a strict seven-day rule is actually quite tricky. But says our health system is already on its knees. We are managing-ish, but with time it will get worse if um, once winter hits. The government's answer, open the immigration floodgates. Well, attempt to. It's finally put basically every single health role on the immigration green list. Everyone from dentists to counsellors will be given automatic New Zealand residency. A strong signal to health workers internationally that we're serious in rolling out the welcome mat. What has taken you so long? And look, we've, we've continued to keep it under review. Every country across the globe is trying to get staff. The PM just hoping his tardy welcome mat looks nicer than everyone else's. Oh, Jenna joins us now. So same, same on COVID, but there's a new face at the cabinet table today. Chris Hipkins filled the gaps left by sacking his wayward minister Stuart Nash today. Barbara Edmonds has become the new economic development minister. Penny Hennaday picked up forestry. Mika Whaiteri will be the Hawke's Bay delegate for the cyclone recovery. And Rachel Brooking has been promoted to a minister outside cabinet with responsibility for oceans and fisheries. To fill that empty seat at the cabinet table left by Stuart Nash, Willow Jean Prime has been promoted into cabinet, meaning for the first time in New Zealand's history, uh, the cabinet table is, has a gender split 50-50 uh, down the middle, the same men and women. But cabinet wasn't the only thing that got a makeover today. Three waters is no more. Well, at least the name. The Prime Minister is expected to make some more substantive announcements around that policy later in the week. But today revealed that the name Three Waters had been thrown on the bonfire because it had become confused. The new branding got a bit of a soft launch at his post-cabinet press conference today. They're now referring to it as the Affordable Water Infrastructure Reform. Really rolls off the tongue. Doesn't it just? Our political editor Jenna Lynch there live from Parliament. Thank you.